Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel if you're new. My name is LJ and you're watching No Clutch Garage. Today we're going to be working on my friend's car. He's got a 340. It's that 340 right there. And then, of course, Justin's right there. My car's over there. This car already is upgraded turbo, but we're going to be taking out the BTT GC that he has on here. And we're going to be putting a Dynamic Auto Works Flowmax 2.5. I'm going to show you guys how to install the DAW and show you how to do basically a turbo swap. This is a hybrid turbo, so this would be a little bit different than doing a big boost upgrade. And the reason I haven't done a big boost upgrade on film is because there is a lot to it and that video would simply take me way too long. This should take you about two, three hours if you're doing everything correctly and you're just moving through it. Not really much to it. All you have to do is take the old turbo off and put the new one on and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these vacuum lines. These vacuum lines are made of plastic and they do tend to be brittle on higher mileage cars. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to release them from here, here, and at the bottom at the inlet. The way to release this is actually very simple, but it can become complicated just depending on how old your car is. Essentially what you have to do is you have to press these sides in, which will lift these sides up and allow you to just pull it back simple like that and we're going to do that for this one this one and the one at the bottom this is the one at the inlet this one as i mentioned before he has an aftermarket turbo already so it is slightly different but the process is pretty much the same if we have enough space we can do this proper So here we go, and then this is actually attached to this, which we can remove. We go. We unplug that, and then this has another uh, one of these clips. So we go ahead and unclip it from this very small vacuum line that is actually attached to the block. So we just want to release it, and here we have the whole vac vacuum system. Out. So as you can see here, we have this just kind of loose. Don't mind it, just leave it alone. We don't need to do anything with this right now. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove this charge pipe. In this case, this is the FTP Motorsports charge pipe. We're going to need a 5mm Allen here and we're going to need an 8mm socket here at the clamps to remove the clamps. You're also going to be removing these two sensors. It's the T-Map and there's also a pressure sensor. To remove these, simply release the tabs, pull them out, very straightforward, and you can move these cables off to the side, just like that. I would go ahead and disconnect the servo motor here, and to do that, you should be able to click in and release it like that. And the only reason we're really releasing this is to give us more room to work around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the charge pipe. I do recommend that you use some of these Allen keys with the ballpoint, and it really helps get around the areas where it's hard to reach. Now we're gonna release these clamps. Once the top one is released, you can pull the top of the charge pipe off. You can leave the clamp on clamped onto the bottom of the charge pipe if you want. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to remove the intake. In order to remove the intake first, we have to unplug the MAF sensor. We're also going to remove this clamp. If you are completely stock, you, all you have to do is unclamp it from there and then unclamp it from the bottom. Here we have an aftermarket inlet. So this is an 11 millimeter nut. So there we go, we have unclamped it and then we can just pull this back, right? And the box comes off really easily. Once you have unclamped the box, all you have to do is pull it up and the box should come right out. Now you can see we have a ton of space here. It seems like he has a turbo blanket, interestingly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook the crankcase ventilator from the inlet 
And then another thing I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and unplug the wastegate actuator, which is this one right here. To unplug this, you might need something like a screwdriver to get in there and then unplug it. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and unplug this crankcase ventilator heater plug and move this whole harness out of the way. Now we have a clear view of the inlet. Now we have this clamp right here that we're going to have to remove and that is also going to use an 8 millimeter socket. Now I do not have the best reach for these clamps but I do have some handy tools so this will help some extenders level. so let's go ahead and remove this and to remove this inlet there is a clamp at the bottom right there you should be able to see the clamp that I'm talking about so I'm gonna reach down with my extenders and try to grab it So the clamp is loose now. This whole inlet can come out. As you can see, this PCV crankcase ventilator is showing some oil. So there's definitely some oil going past the rings. This is pretty normal for a lot of these B58s, but it is not a good, good thing to have. The reason why I externalized my crankcase and put a catch can on it is because having oil like this going back into the motor and recirculating that way actually degrades the quality of your fuel so you don't want any of that and should definitely should definitely do something about this all right guys so now all we are left with now is the charge pipe and the turbo itself right now i want to remove the bottom of the charge pipe and in order to do that we're going to grab a pick tool all right guys and with a pick tool we're going to grab this clip we're going to go ahead and pull it out So I have it right here. Here's a C-clip and it's out. Now that we have basically isolated the turbo and you know everything around it, we can go ahead and start taking some of this shielding off and unplugging some of the stuff that we're gonna have to unplug to take all this stuff out. So the first thing I'm going to unplug are gonna be the O2 sensors. So these O2 sensors can go ahead and be removed. You might need to pick these two uh, just an FYI to get them to fully release. Looks like this one's already out, so go ahead and pull that tab back, press in, and then just release like that. This one should be the same. There's probably a little tab down here that you're gonna have to pick if you want to fully release it. So now we have this turbo shield, but in order to remove this heat shield, this turbo shield, we're gonna have to remove the actual shield that we're supposed to remove. To do that, we're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket in order to take these bolts out. And this is why I don't like turbo blankets. All right, now we have the turbo completely exposed how we need it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the turbo. These turbos are actually really easy to remove. There are a few nuts along the top that need to be removed. There's a bar that comes off along with it. That bar is basically making sure that the turbo is being torqued down properly. So we take off that bar. The turbo should be able to just slide out once we take that off. There are also some coolant lines and such that we need to take out and uh, I will go through those as we go along. All right guys and this next part is going to be a little bit intricate but we're going to get through it. All right so what we have to do at this point first of all I want to unclamp the downpipe from the turbo. Now I don't know who worked on this turbo and who installed it but they wanted to make my life difficult. And this is pointed up obviously we want it pointed down with the bolt down but essentially you just have to undo it and remove the clamp. This one we have to remove that bolt that is right down there and basically why we have to do that is to release this line this line feeds through and behind the turbo and it makes it incredibly difficult to do from the top if you don't remove it that way and that way you can also remove the bottom line which you can also remove over here so we have one two 
three bolts to remove and that should allow us to completely take out the turbo. And actually guys, I didn't mean to mislead you. There's also a turbo drain line that's at the bottom of the turbo. You can kind of see it through here. It's really hard, but it's this line right down here. I don't know if you can see my fingers, but that one feeds into the block almost directly. And the easiest way to take this one off is actually by going under the car and taking off the screw that is going to be basically making sure that the line doesn't pop off. But you can do it from the top. You're just going to need a few extenders and a lot of patience. So I'm going to attempt to do it from the top. If I can't do it from the top, I'm going to have no choice but to put the car in jack stands and work on it from underneath. All right, so now that's been released. We're gonna take like a crowbar or something. We're not gonna do whatever the hell these guys did. But basically, these, these lines are pretty hard to take off. I'm not gonna lie. But basically, we want to pull these out and did, these do require like a degree of force. But of course, you don't wanna damage anything. So you kinda have to go at it for a little while. The only problem I'm having now is that whoever worked on this car before, like, did so much damage to this. I'm not even sure I should put this line back in. Maybe I should get a different line because this line looks severely damaged. <laughs> Cooling lines out. Wow, they didn't even bother to change the O-rings. <sighs> All right guys, the next ones we're gonna remove, the cooling line that's still on the turbo actually runs to here. And this is an oil line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. All right, we have the bolt right here. Now the way to remove these is pretty much the same as the way it was attempted on the other ones. You kind of want to pry off the block. We're gonna try to be a little bit more careful so we don't jack things up. All right, took some wrestling, but I finally got it off and you can see the coolant is starting to drip off now the last one we have to take off is the one that is under the turbo and that one should be a little bit easier to take off this one's just going to pour out all the coolant seems like <sighs> sometimes this can happen where these will break luckily i do have a spare line that i can attach to this i didn't have to be as careful this does happen though i do want to warn you that you know i tried my best to take it off it's tough especially when these motors have a lot of miles what ends up happening is these o-rings get sticky and it makes it difficult for those to come out so anytime you replace those lines make sure you also replace the o-rings on the lines and lube them up now the last one we have to remove is going to be the oil drain line and that one is underneath the turbo but what you're going to have to do this if you're doing it from the top is you're going to end up having to feel around for it if you have a lift or jack stands definitely recommend doing it from the bottom and you can see up and it's right there at the bottom so uh, let's go ahead and try this from the top if i can't get it out from the top i'm gonna have no choice but to lift the car so we got the screw out these are really handy by the way these flex extenders help me take this out really quickly now that that's off, we're gonna run into the same issue as the other ones, we're gonna have to pull it off. But this one's easier pulled off once the turbo is off. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull it off this way though and see if I can pull it off before having to pull the turbo. All right, it's off and the way I took that off, basically the top of the turbo or the CHRA is like this, right? The line comes off and feeds into the block. So what I did is I got one of those crowbars stuck it in the line or between the line and then pulled back and that pulled the whole line out guys the next part we have seven nuts that we have to take out they're right here along the top i'm gonna break them first Two are kind of tricky to get to. Just takes a little bit of patience. And then this bar comes out. 
Once that bar is out, the turbo will come off. Now, it might be stuck, so you might need to do a couple of these first. Move it around. Finally got the turbo out. There is a bolt that is supporting the turbo at the bottom. My 340i didn't have it. My 240 did have it, and it looks like this 340 has it. So after you undo that, you can just pull the turbo. And you should be able to just lift it out. Now, up here. All right, that's done. All right, guys, now that the turbo has been taken out of the car, the next thing you want to do is prepare the new turbo to be installed. That includes transferring over any of the lines as well as putting on fresh o-rings and putting some of the hardware some of the new hardware on them on the block in order to have just fresh pieces fresh parts what we have here is the installation kit from dynamic autoworks and that includes new studs new nuts new o-rings some more o-rings a new gasket very important and a new gasket for the downpipe <laughs> They also included some stickers and some gummy bears. <laughs> All right, guys. Now here we have the turbo that we took out. This is a Vargas GC. It has a very familiar stock housing style kind of design. What we have to do now is we have to remove all these lines. This is a coolant line and we're just going to remove it. I usually like to wiggle them and see if I can get some give. That way, that way I don't have to pry it or anything like that. Most of the time they'll come out. Sometimes you have to uh, use a little bit of force. You can use one of these. These are like door panel removers and they'll remove all the plastic on the doors. You can use these. These work really well when trying to do anything like this. thousand years later. Now we got it out. If you mess up a line, these should be able to go right back in. But I have a few spare lines, so we need to get those lines off. And another thing we need to take off is the wastegate. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to transfer all of this like the arm and the wastegate to the other turbo. So in order to remove the arm, you have to take this little C-clip off. There are specific tools you can use to take off these C-clips. If not, you can use like a two flat heads or, you know, a flat head and... All right, so I grab one of my pick tools. So with that pick tool, I'm gonna grab it. And then with this, I'm gonna push it out. Just make sure you don't lose it. It's right there. And then you can just pull the arm off loose like that. So to take off the wastegate, we're gonna use a 20, a T20. And we take off these, they're gonna be four small screws. And then once those are off, this just pulls out. And now we're done with this turbo. There is nothing left for us to do here and we can package this back up. I'm not even gonna bother taking off this turbo blanket. The turbo blanket is not getting transferred over to the new turbo. All right, so now I'm gonna get this turbo out of the way and we're gonna bring in the new turbo. Now, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys know that I do not run a hybrid turbo on my car myself. I think there's a place for them, but not for my build. If I had a daily B58, I would totally put a hybrid on it though, because it is the easiest turbo upgrade out there. But let's take a look at this one. So this is the Dynamic Auto Works Turbo. It looks just like the stock one. It actually is slightly larger than the stock one the difference is not too visible and it's not too obvious i think one of the biggest differences though is in the inlets the inlets are a lot wider than the stock turbo and of course even that turbo right there is smaller than this 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 turbo should be good for upwards of 700 horsepower the exhaust manifold has been reworked some to allow more airflow. So it's not completely a stock frame hybrid, but it is a very good upgrade. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start piecing it together so that we can throw it in the car. All right guys, so I have here a 
newer line or the coolant. The order to put them in, you put this one in, and then the one that's attached to the car right now goes right here, which is the other coolant. So this is coolant fill and then coolant return, oil fill, oil return. This one's gonna go like this, but before we do any of that, I would recommend when you go to put these back, get some O-ring lube. It's uh, silicone grease, I think it's called. But if you don't have that, you can just grab some motor oil, which I mean, this is like just a hack if you don't have anything else. Grab some motor oil. That's where I'm putting my little O-rings. And so what I do now is I just grab them. I put them on. Do the same thing here. And then this can just go right in. Next one I'm going to go ahead and do is going to be the oil return. So we go ahead and take these off. They included with the hardware kit some new O rings. Let's stick those in here too. Get them all looped up. So we grab our O ring, put it on. Go ahead and lube it up. Lube up the turbo side. And I'm going to go ahead and put the other one in. And so I just want to have it ready to pop in into the car whenever. You can go ahead and stick this in. And it should fit right in. There you go. Now that it's in place, go ahead and grab my screw. Seat it in first. Now these are aluminum bolts. But the aluminum bolts can strip, so just be very careful. And guys, I'm showing you everything that I'm doing. Mainly because these things will come up. No installation is ever perfect. Very rarely. And now we can move to the top line, which is the feed line. So for the oil feed, same thing. We're going to go ahead and take these O-rings off. These O-rings look a little bit newer, a little bit better. I wonder if this was one of the lines that they ended up having to change out. Maybe they damaged it too, more, too much. These O-rings look pretty fresh. The other O-rings do not. So I'm just going to clean this up. This line looks fairly new. If I had to guess, this is a new line. So same thing. Just go ahead and uh, put the new O-rings on there. Now, I have one O-ring left over, and that's from the line that is still on the car. Uh, that line is a little bit more difficult to take off, and that's why most people leave it on the car, and that's what that O-ring is on. So now we have this line right here, and this line will go from the top of the turbo to the block. We're gonna turn our turbo this way. We're gonna go ahead and just grab a dab with this oil. If you have lube, even better. Go ahead and lube it up. This line does not go like this, okay? It's not go like that either. It goes like this. We grab it. Runs along the side of the inlet. And then we put it in. Once it's in, grab our bolt. And then of course, screw it on. Once you're done with the power tool, grab your ratchet and just give it a, a little little turn and make sure everything is on there tight. Don't over tighten, just a little bit hand tight and that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. Now, we put it back in this position and now we're gonna put our wastegate on. So here's our wastegate, I'm gonna put it through. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of these guys in. Grab a little power tool. I'm not going to bolt it all the way in, but we can secure it. And I do not have any torque specs for this, guys. Sorry. But just make sure there is no play on the wastegate. Make sure all the bolts are bolted in and not squeezing the plastic on the wastegate. No play whatsoever. All right. And then here we grab our C clamp, this little tiny clip, and we push it in. And now it's put together the way it needs to be, and it's ready to go on the car. All right, guys, we're now outside, and we're getting ready to put the turbo back in the car one of the things that i have kind of learned is that whenever you do these turbo swaps you always want to replace this hardware that goes right here along the head a lot of times what happens is when you try to take them out they get seized up or they get rusty you know things like that you really want to replace those and so we have some replacement studs that come with 
the installation kit. These are really nice because they have a stop, unlike the OEM ones. The OEM ones kind of just they look like that. And then these are also a little bit shorter, which is not an issue. There's only about I'd say about two milli two millimeters of thread less. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put these and replace them. But I also want to add just just a little bit of um, blue Loctite, just one little drop. And basically that's so that these studs stay in there good. So we're going to go ahead and put them in by hand. And you always want to thread these in by hand because the head is aluminum. So you don't want to run the risk of actually stripping the head by accident. And I don't think people realize just how soft this aluminum head is. But let's just say I've had to use a helicoil every once in a while. So you thread them in by hand as far as you can. Once it's pretty far in, you're going to grab an E6. And then as far as torquing these down, the correct spec, I believe, is 10 newton meters. But these, just make sure they're hand tight. Don't go overboard with the torque. Once you start feeling like it's not going to turn anymore, kind of like this, you can leave them alone. And then we're going to do the same thing for all of these studs. Next up is our gasket. And this gasket goes a certain way. These cutouts go towards the top. And then of course, all you have to do is match the holes. And this one goes like this, so we're gonna insert it. All right. Now the gasket is in place. And now, uh, another thing I wanna do is I wanna replace the gasket on the downpipe. All right guys, so now we're gonna replace this gasket. So you can see. <laughs> Here's the old one, and here's the new gasket, and it just goes right in. All right, and now we can slap our turbo on. Hey guys, one slight modification that I like to make on these cars, and the reason why I started doing it is because my 340, my 2016 340 didn't have this at all. I like to remove this bracket. This is a support bracket that goes on the bottom of the turbo, and it's meant to hold it in place and steady honestly guys the manifold is sturdy enough to hold the weight of the turbo that coupled with downpipe and all the brackets that are going to be holding that together will be enough this just makes it a pain to put the turbo on it makes it extremely difficult on my big boost setup i don't have this brace at all i actually removed it because you kind of have to uh, or there's no space so if a manifold like that can hold a 40 pound turbo kit i think it can hold one of these so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, i've done it plenty of times with no issues and uh, that's gonna make our turbo installation a little bit quicker guys to remove that bolt you're gonna need a t45 and there are going to be two bolts. All right, once they're loose, what I like to do is I like to remove my ratchet and just use the extender to take these off by hand. No more packet. And now we can put our turbo in. To put this turbo in, we put it in like this. Wastegate is facing in. We start turning it start positioning it right spot so the trick to this is going to be tilting so the turbo is kind of tilted like this so you have to tilt it in and then insert it all right guys once the turbo is in this general area i kind of dropped it carefully so that you know you guys could see this but a lot of people have trouble putting this manifold on because it is kind of flexible I actually found this trick after doing a few of these because I was having trouble doing that. And so what a lot of people do is they resort to taking this bottom, like this bottom bar off. And this bar, in my opinion, you shouldn't take it off. This manifold's wedged, right? So what ha ends up happening is you put the manifold in and it kind of locks into place as you place it. And then you can secure it with the top nuts. The problem is that since this is flexible, if you try to lift it like this, you're not going to get it's not going to go on even. So what you want to do is with your right hand, you're going to grab the outlet of the turbo, meaning the one leading to the charge pipe. And with your left hand, you're going to grab the center. So these two runners, and you're simply going to pick it up and place it. 
and there you go now you just place these in make sure the back is also secured and you can start putting the nuts in and as you can see that falls right into place now the reason why that works is because this is solid this middle part is your exhaust side your hot side this is your cold side so you're grabbing the solid parts making sure they're secured in and then these will just follow because these are also attached to the manifold and they're a little flexible so they'll just fall into place but once you have everything like this uh, you can start putting everything together that means putting the lines back in the block re oil return line you know this coolant line that's a little bit of a hassle to get in there and then uh, you're pretty much done so what I'm gonna do now <clears throat> is I'm just gonna film as I put this back together and um, I'll do it kind of like a time lapse and I'll stop if I need to if I need to give you any kind of tips this is the bar that we took off originally that goes on the top where the bolts go so we're gonna place this and put it in and basically this is gonna ensure that all the top bolts are bolted in evenly or not the top bolts but the top nuts I'm gonna go ahead and put the nuts back on and we're gonna bolt them in Guys, if you're able to and you have a torque wrench, the top nuts, once you put them on the manifold, you're gonna need to torque them down to 11 pound-feet of torque or 15 newton meters. Now guys, I do wanna to talk to you about this thing right here. This is an upgraded aluminum inlet. This inlet obviously is made of aluminum. It deletes the stock resonator that's at the bottom. This one's specific to this turbo. Now it does have a C-clip clamp right here. You're actually not gonna use that. What's gonna end up happening is you're gonna use a coupler like this and we're gonna couple it together to the turbo and mate it and then that's how it's gonna go in. But before we do any of this, we gotta put the charge pipe back in and start connecting and then the intake will be the last thing that we put in. For now, we're gonna start plugging everything back together and we should be done here pretty soon. For this particular setup, the charge pipe just drops in. And it clicks right in. Just give it a few tugs, make sure that it's on there properly. And then this side, I wanna point something out. This is the previous charge pipe he was using we're gonna use it again but if you notice this top and bottom don't have any thread tape on them these little bung plugs make sure you put thread tape on there i know that the chances of this being a boost leak is very slim but sometimes since this is pipe thread if you open up the pipe thread too much there may actually be some tiny spaces where air can seep through where boost can seep through and this one for example is it's got some of that thread tape on it but these do not so i'm gonna go ahead and fix this and then we're gonna put it on all right guys now the charge pipe is in and now the next thing i want to do is i'm gonna go ahead and put the heat shielding that goes on right here so i can start connecting everything else so here's that heat shield Guys, now that we are at this point, <clears throat> the only thing left is to put on the intake. This is where I'd like to go ahead and make sure that everything is incorrectly. There's no leaks, anything like that. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start the car. But before I start the car, if you guys remember, when we took the turbo off, there was a small amount of oil and a small amount of coolant that came out. Most of it, though, is coolant. Oil won't leak out that much because it needs to be pressurized, uh, but the coolant will definitely come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit of coolant and then I'm gonna start it up, make sure there are no leaks, make sure everything is functioning properly, and then we'll go ahead and finish it up. Guys, and I recommend that you do not go away from the actual coolant that BMW uses. This is not pre-diluted, so you're gonna have to dilute it. I grabbed a random one gallon jug 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, put about half a jug in here of coolant. And then I'm gonna fill about half of it also with some water. And I recommend that you use distilled water and not purified, not anything else, just distilled water. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the reservoir. Now, because this is driven by a mechanical pump on the turbo side and the motor, I am gonna have to turn the car over, let it run for a minute and wait until the bubbles naturally come out. I'm gonna leave this uncapped and then I'm gonna fill as I go until I have the appropriate amount of coolant inside. Guys, and the smoke that you guys see, it's not oil, it's not anything like that. It's actually the coating on the turbo and it's obviously burning up. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It'll smoke for, for a little short while, but everything looks to be running fine. Uh, we're just gonna leave it like that for a little while while I fill it in. <laughs> that turbo is sounding really good. I know you guys can probably hear it, but there's a small whine. I did see a small hole too. Alright guys, now I have addressed the actual leak. I ended up having to get a new line because that line was just not good. But anyway, you do have to check for leaks. I already ran the car for a while. There are no leaks anymore in the coolant area and no more leaks or actually there weren't any leaks coming from the fuel lines. So looks like we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and put this intake in and uh, this is the Williams Performance intake pipe for this particular inlet you don't need to have an aftermarket elbow but he did have this so you just go ahead and put it on but this is it basically you're just gonna go ahead and put your intake back on and the car is ready to be driven so let's go ahead and get this done and just like that we're done installing the intake then we'll just plug this in Make sure all the connectors are plugged in, everything is on there correctly. And if everything checks out, we are done. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this installation video. This is the Dynamic Auto Works V2.5. If you run into any of these issues, I went over some of the issues that you may run into and now you know how to fix them. A few notes, do be careful with the little aluminum lines. Those are very fragile. I would suggest if you are having issues taking them off like I did, you can use WD-40, let it soak for a little bit and then slowly start twisting and turning and pulling those lines out. Guys, please give me a like and subscribe if you like this video, there will be more videos. Videos like this guys thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you later peace